with all the big calls on all the big races. It's time for a festive. What a shout. Welcome along out there. Wow, a couple of quiet days. We come steaming back into contention to look at all the very best racing action over the Christmas period. 11 meetings domestically and in Ireland for you to shake a stick at. Of course, on Boxing Day, it all goes right through to the New Year period. What a time to be on planet Earth if you're a racing fan. Myself, Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you. Feeling really festive. You can see we've even made a bit of an effort here, look. No expense spent, I think, is the thing. Look at these ridiculous tinsel in the background. But uh, from a production point of view, we're winning awards next year, no doubt. Absolutely. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe, of course, with our, with our sponsors, Bet365. Pat Cooney joins us. Where are you, Pat? Up in Stoke? Yes, up in Stoke and uh, looking forward to the festivities. It should be great fun. And what a wonderful list of uh, cars we've got to look forward to. We need you, Pat, because the markets, they're out there, aren't they? There's bound to be a yep. few ricks as well, aren't there? Kills, kills comes back. <laughs> there is. Well, we're waiting for them. Not everything's been priced up yet. Obviously, we've got 11 meetings, haven't we? Fingers right, on the know. buzzers. Plenty to go, so plenty to look at. Um, Are you feeling festive? How's the... Uh, now, I last saw you at this racing media lunch that we had, and I think yeah. I last... My last <coughs> image of you was lighting a cigarette outside a pub somewhere in London, <laughs> trying to get an Uber, looking like you're about to fall off a pub table. But how, how's it gone? Are you feeling in good form? Uh, yeah, I've had about three or four more of them since then. But, you know, <laughs> but, but yeah, we're all right. I, you know, tipping's been going well, punting's been going well, so I'm looking forward to it. Small feels disappointing for Kempton Boxing Day, really, but, you know, the quality's there. Yeah, oh my goodness gracious me, especially across the Irish Sea. And time to bring in our powerhouse guest for you. We're getting used to that background. Patrick Mullins joins us, hot off the gallops on the Curra. All right, man, good to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you, Patrick, and everyone at Close Sutton. So, Patrick, you had a very busy period, didn't you? Paul Townend, of course, was on the sidelines. He's come roaring back. But you got to ride some absolute stonkers. And this is the time. I mean, Patrick, I tried to count how many runners you've got over the festive period. I basically gave up. It looks like the entire string's out to play at last. Yeah, I think there was slightly over 90 maybe entered for the... Four days, so um, but you know, it wouldn't be like Willie to, to make a few entries here and there. So um, yeah, get them all out on Christmas Day. So we know exactly how many are right are, are entered. But um, <clears throat> no, it's going to be very busy. But it's a great way to be. A good complaint. Yeah, absolutely. So the strings are well. We're hoping you know you just come off riding your work, of course. Uh, the great thing about Ireland kills is the twenty seventh. Of course, here you are watching this. With you know, what a shout out on on Christmas Eve. Uh, the 27th is already jocked in Ireland, isn't it? So we know what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good fields. Um, some very, very interesting races. Uh, I suppose the interesting thing, Patrick, you're running a 36% strike rate this season in over in Ireland, over the jumps. You've got two rides just in the bumpers. Is that? And I was a bit surprised to see that, Patrick. Uh, snap back to reality. Yeah, Paul. Paul Tamman with his back. So um, yeah, we're going to be a little quiet, a little quieter this this Christmas, but. Uh, I'm looking forward to showers at later in the week, so there'll be still plenty there. Yeah, the, the, the sticks will come back your way. That's right, we've got the Savills, of course, later on. It's all there. I mean, seven <coughs> grades won over the Irish period. Absolutely incredible stuff. And we know that stars are born there. Talking of which, Patrick, now you started something. I've done numerous shows with you since the jump season's rolled back. And one name, we finally got his name a couple of weeks ago, Fasal Vega. He's your ride on St. Stephen's Day. Is he still flying? <laughs> He hasn't. Uh, he hasn't got a Icarus on it yet. Anyway, we're we're very happy with him. Um, Willie declared him this morning. We had a, a seven or eight entered that bumper, and um, he was Willie's pick. So that tells you all you need to know. Really looking forward to getting on him. Yeah, the famous colours, of course, out of the crap mare Quivega. Um, really cannot wait for that. And on the twenty seventh, in what might be known over the years as the appreciated bumper, over two mile four, he won really interesting one for Sean Moore Ryan, Embassy Gardens. What can you tell us about this chap? Yeah, it's um, like we we don't, you know, two mile four, two miles, we're not, we're, like, it's not a case of um, finding a slow horse for it, you know, it's, it's just we, we find horses to run when and where they can, like appreciated one, it obviously. Um, he's a beautiful horse, we had his, da his dam, Adriana the Mott. Um, he he's doing good work, I really like him. Uh, to me, he's a horse who's going to progress the more he races, you know, he's not an ex-point appointer, um, so I can see him improving from this, but I still think he could win, all right? All right, well, that's all we wanted to hear. Sticking with St. Stephen's Day, then, this is the bit that everyone will be wanting to hear about, because finally, I say finally, because, you know, it is Christmas when he's coming out. Uh, Supreme bound, Sagar hard, if everything goes well in the second race on the opening day. 
Yeah, so go ahead. We're finally getting them out. Like, we're probably a bit stacked up now. Like we've been saying before, it was dry autumn, early winter. So um, he worked really well on the Curra on Tuesday. We're very happy with him. He schooled well, which is a point of point winner. You'd expect that. Um, I see Gordon has a horse that was very eye catching in his maiden hurdle, Ash Tree Meadow. So he'll set up a decent standard. But look, we'd be very disappointed if Sir Gerhard can't. Um, uh, get off to a winning start, but we were very disappointed with Kilcrush a couple of weeks ago, so uh, it, it does happen. But look, I, <clears throat> um, he should uh, he should start off on the right foot of it. Every chance that one to fourteen shot might just have bumped into one, and we're going to see Largy <laughs> Davy, of course, over the Christmas period as well. Kills, how do people should they all these maiden hurdles? You know, Limerick, of course, Down Royal. We've got, of course, you know, and Leopardstown. How do you play these? Obviously, Sagar is going to be a warm order, but you can find some value in them, can't you? Well, you can do, but I mean, a, a lot of them are about seeing how last year's bumper stars, uh, as it were, fair. Uh, and you're, you're really just, you're looking at them for the future. You're not necessarily looking for having a bet in them, are you? But you do, especially mm. given what uh, the Irish did to the British, especially over hurdles at Cheltenham. I mean, they won all of them. Yeah. Um, you've, got to, you've got to watch all of them, basically. So, so what's he got to do to be f favourite for the Supreme after John Bond in the Kennelgate? Uh, I mean, impression. he's got to, you know, he's got to win by a hurdle to be favourite for, <laughs> yeah. for the Supreme, because John Bond is already <laughs> two to one. Now, that, yeah. You know, we all know that that's a daft price at the moment because we haven't seen... We know we all know that Willie's going to have twenty five in the Supreme when the entries come out. Yeah, uh, you know, and we don't, we, you know, and because it, it's it's taken such a long while for for all these horses to come out, we don't yeah. know where the where the strength lies yet, do we? Like, you know, but but uh, there's no chance winning a maiden hurdle will knock John Bond out of the top person in the market. It's exciting though, isn't it? Of course, because in the same colours, one horse that will that is you know Andy Bo's favourite for the festival, and it's the Ark or it's Fernie Hollow, uh, Patrick, who lines up in the racing post novice chase, Grade One time. Now this is one. Chap, you can tell us plenty about. Yeah, I'm the only man who managed to get him beat, not <laughs> once but twice. Um, so, but he was very good in punch down. Look, he, he bounced out in front. Um, usually, you know, since he put the hood on him, he's been much easier to ride. Um, and in a beginner's chase, you don't really want to get in cover, you want to have a clear view of your fences. So, he ended up in front. He was a bit A to B for the first mile, but I wasn't really asking, I was just letting him find his own way. And in the last half a mile, when we kicked up two gears and we've had the race, he's been straight through. And, you know, at the, la at the <clears> second <throat> last length, then he's winged it. And down to the last, I love the way he met it short and just tightened up and got away from it very quickly. So he showed he had a brain as well. Um, look, he's going to be giving Riviera to tell £13, pounds, um, but she's, she gets that for a reason. Um, and I think the fact that she'll be going a good gallop will A, help him relax, and B, it'll give him a lead. And we've found, um, you know, when they're getting a lead, they, they jump a lot thicker. I think that'll help them. Uh, I suppose where Riviera Tell has won in um, Navin and and uh, Punchtown, there's three fences in the last three furlongs. In Leperstown, there's only one fence in the last three furlongs. So I don't think that will play to her advantage, particularly. And I expect Fernie Hollow, uh, you know, I think once he locks onto her on the home end, I think he'll show his class. Kersu Bleem reopposes. Let's stick with this uh, just for a minute, Patrick. He, uh, could we say that he gave him a fright? I mean, obviously, the comparisons with Envoy LN will be out there, you know, same colours, 11111 horse, uh, you know, champion bumper, all that sort of thing. Unlike Envoy LN, this guy actually had to learn to race a little bit over fences on his debut, didn't he? Only a good thing. Yeah, look, that was because of how the race panned out. So I was in front and I wasn't jumping particularly fluently and I wasn't particularly sending him on. So we've turned out of the back straight and everyone's still on the bridle, and I just sat on him to the home bend. So it's turned into a sprint. You can see there's seven or eight of us in a pile around the home bend. So he's had to sprint down the straight over the last two. Of course, William is a very quick horse, and even though he, he has headed him after the second last, I was never really worried. Um, and even though Rachel came and gave me a good bump just to uh, just to make sure we were still awake, um, um, you know, he, he that didn't distract him. So... While it visually might not have been very impressive, the way the race was ran that it turned into a sprint, it's hard to be impressive in a sprint. Um, this race will be run very differently. It'll be a strong gallop, a bit more like his champion bumper win, and I think that'll play to his strengths. He's a Westerner, he's a point-to-point -point winner. A strong gallop suits him. Mm, you were taken by Gordon Elliott's mare, weren't you, the four-year-old? Yeah, tonight, I mean, look, she's got, you know, she, she hasn't, she's neither touched a twig nor come off the bridle in three starts. She's jumped absolutely superbly. She's got, on our figures, RPR 153. Now, to give her 30 pounds of the beating, you are talking about Arkle winning form there and then. 
Like, you know, I, I'm not sure the market really uh, reflects just the task that he's got on his hands. This is a proper race. Mm -hmm. Like, she's very good. If she if she stays clear, I, the, the point about the one fence in the last uh, in the last three furlongs is is valid because obviously jumping is very very much yeah. her strength. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I mean, I think he's got a real task on his hands. You know, because this, this is this is this is a decent filly, and obviously, you know, she's getting all that weight. Uh, it, should she go to the Arkle, she wouldn't be getting the extra. The extra six pound that she gets for weight for age because that doesn't count anymore by the time you get to the Arkle, not in Britain anyway. Yeah. Uh, but to give her thirteen pounds and beat her, um, well, I mean, he's going to be very, very short for the Arkle if he does that. But we know he's a prop horse. He's, you know, the oh, absolutely. He's yeah, he's a, he's a very, very good horse. But he's going to have to be absolutely top class if she's on her game as she has been. Mm, Gordon Elliott won this with Clarkham, who was a four-year-old as well back in the day. Pat Cooney then, these markets are already going to be sizzling now. We're getting stuck into the festive feast. Have you got a question for Patrick? Yeah, Patrick, I was going to ask you about Appreciate It, who the news broke earlier in the week that he's going to remain over hurdles for the rest of the season. And what that did was certainly breathe some life into the champion hurdle conversation because we were looking for viable alternatives to the mighty honeysuckle. How near do you think Appreciate can get to her? Just how near can you get? Um, sure, look, he's a 20 length Supreme Novice Hurdle winner. So it's a little bit like Classical Dream last year. Like Classical Dream was actually declared rather than, um, in a beginner's chase and he got a small setback. And it was now I know it was fun some before he got back, but appreciate it is uh, much less minor than that. So he's still riding out, but we don't want to be doing fast work with him. So he's not running, which as a novice chaser would mean one run before going to Cheltenham. Uh, looking at the champion hurdle market, you know, if anything did happen, the honeysuckler, she didn't turn up on the day, he, you know, uh, it, it makes sense for him to go down that route. Um, how close can he get to her? Well, if any horse can, I suppose it's him, isn't it? He's, he's been hugely impressive. Is he really a two-mile hurdler? Not to look at him, um, but what he did in three novices was extraordinary. Although, I don't know, Paul or Pat might be able to tell me it was Buda, the last Supreme Novice winner to win the champion hurdle the next year. I, I'm not that... Uh, yeah, was it, it? at least that. Yeah, it's a long yeah. while since it's a long, long while since that happened. Yeah, there's your curveball. There's your curveball. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these you dig up these stats and you mention it, like you know, when it comes around to Cheltenham, and then by the time you reach December, the following year, you've no idea. <laughs> yeah, <what you've> got <laughs> look again, yeah all, all the A's and all that sort of thing. You're talking to curveballs, Will and Dan in the gallery. It must be an absolute nightmare for them because I'm saying Patrick, then I'm going to Pat, mm. and uh, who knew that Pat Mullins could be Pat Cooney at the same time? You know, all the viewers out there enjoying that one. Okay, so. Before we look at what is exactly coming up on the show, no hot topics this week. There have been some massive news stories, haven't there, in the past month, of course. But we're feeling festive. We only want to be positive. I would, however, like to put you in the know, if you've not seen this week, about the Racing Media Academy that the Racing Post are very proudly in association with all the big media outlets. Kills. So basically, uh, if you're over 18 and you fancy getting into the racing media game, be it what any side of that whatsoever, uh, you can spend a week, April 22nd, it launches this, RMA, the Immaculate Conception, if you like, Christmas week of RMA. Uh, you get a, an intensive week at the British Racing School, then you get a paid placement, either RTV, Sky, uh, Race Tech even, if you fancy that sort of thing, or RMG, of course, RTV and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. New, diverse talent, yeah. all backgrounds. Is there basically. a limit to how many people can be in it? Uh, it well, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. Imagine if they've got 5,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, you know, won't, like, you know, this is what we want to see, though, isn't do? it? Yeah, but I mean, as many people, you know, it's, uh, you know, invite, come along, have a look. I mean, it's like, you know, I get so many people on Twitter uh, who, you know, ask, can I send you a direct message? How do I get into the game? How do I get into the game? Yeah. Here's your chance. Uh, you know, yes. come and have a go. Yeah, yeah. the brainchild yeah, of Josh Happy Happy, of course. Um, so hot on the, you know, on the diversity, but it's new diverse talent. Any background, that's the key. Patrick, what have you made of this? It's a great opportunity. Like as someone who, um, as like, someone who uh, enjoys writing and enjoys that kind of side of it, uh, I got into it kind of through the Mark and Wills Awards, which aren't there anymore. So this is an opportunity for everyone, and anyone, to, to give it a go. I recommend it. You know, Patrick. Obviously, you know we have a bit of a giggle about it. You know, but you were born into racing royalty. But you really enjoy the media side of it, don't you? And you're rather handy with a quill, my man. Uh, well, look, I enjoy writing. I had a great English teacher, and um, it's something a bit different. Some people like it, some people don't. But um, it's, it is it is something I think that uh, uh, is very enjoyable. And like I said, if anyone is thinking uh, thinking of it, this is 
this is a great way to get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes racing can seem like a small pond. We're opening it up. So if you're over 18, you fancy giving it a go, check out the great story. Tom Kirk has a nice piece on that with Josh as well. There's a free link for you to get involved with. 155 then. Who wants some more grey bud action? Novice Chase has come out to play in the Corto Star Novice Chase, named after the great Corto, of course, who's to spin around Kempton. Who is going to come out on top of this? Pat Cooney, just the four runners. Just the four runners, and uh, with respect to the uh, the two outsiders, it does look a match, doesn't it? Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senor. And I think whatever the ground on the day at 155 is going to go a long way to determine how the betting ends up on this one. And in, and indeed, what will win it? You do look at Ahoy Senor. He's actually 11 or 10 second favourite behind Brave Man's Game, whose odds on. But Ahoy Senor, they've only met once. That was at Aintree. Ahoy Senor won at 66 to 1 by seven lengths from Brave Man's Game. He won well over fences last time out. He's actually rated three pound higher than uh, Paul Nichols' horse. So why is he not favourite? Well, I think most people I've spoken to in the game, they're all huge Brave Man game fans. And I think there's just a feeling that three miles around Kempton is going to suit Brave Man's a lot more than a hoist than you. But keep an eye on the weather, because if it does turn out to be a, more of a stamina test, then maybe a hoist than you should be closer in the market to him. But fascinating race. I think on goodish ground, I'd favour Brave Man game. I was at Haydock when he won. He beat a really good horse, as indeed he did on his chase debut. And he looks the horse, I, I think, that has looked better over fences to me. So he'll be my selection. But uh, we're all on weather watch, I think, here. Well, the Lucinda Russell camp will be hoping, of course, the heavens do open for Ahoy Senor. Patrick, have you been watching these two from afar? I, I've seen them. I've seen them win all right. Um, I wouldn't have a strong opinion now on which which will win. I mean, obviously, uh, Ahoy Senor looked very very impressive the last day, but um, it's not one that I'd like to be put my last five or one way or the other. Mm, okay, all right, Patrick, sitting on the fence. Then we'll we'll give him that one. Kills, get off it. Um, Ahoy Senor, all flat track so far. Perfect for him if the rain comes. Could he grind Brave Man's game into some sort of submission? I don't know. It's, it's, it's very hard to tell, isn't it? Bravo's game has no problem with going from the front as well, does he? We've seen that. Like, you know, and his, his jumping for a novice is amazing, isn't it? Like, you know, it is really, really good. Yeah. Isn't it great to see these two that met at Aintree over hurdles yeah. as well back up against the Yeah, I mean, I, I just wonder, when I was watching it, just how much Brave Man's game had left at Haydock last time. Hard. I just uh. thought he was. I just thought he was starting to tie. Don't get me wrong; he's still very good form. He's actually toyed with itchy feet and uh, and paid a piper. They're good horses, uh, you know. But I just wondered, you know, is he really a three miler? Well, Paul seemed to think he had lots left at the finish. Yeah, yeah, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did ask him, and he said, "Harry, Harry said he had loads." Yeah, like, tons, you know I mean? a little so, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah tons. I, like, I'm, you know I mean? so, I'm in a. I, I'm, I'm, I am going to sit on the fence about that one. I wasn't. I didn't think he was as bad as a lot of people. A lot of our good judges thought at the time. No, I didn't say it was bad at all. It was a brilliant round of jumping. I just thought in the last hundred yards it looked to me like he was getting a bit tired. That was all. Um, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, this is a fence sitter, really. I mean, if you if you said to me you've got to have a bet on the race, I'll back whichever one goes off the biggest price. Like, you know, because it's a proper toss. It is 1-0 to a hoist in your, of course. Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, all right, okay. This is a sizzler. It's one fifty-five. Will you be brave and be taking on a hoist senor? 2.30. One of three grade ones on the card. It is the Christmas Hurdle. Uh, interesting little lineup here. I want to come to you, Kills, first, because we've got Epitomp, fives on, beaten in the race last year. Dead heated with um, Sleepy, of course, not so sleepy in the fighting fifth. It's all a bit underwhelming, this Kills, isn't it? Massively. I mean, if you want to know why I appreciate it staying over hurdles, you just have to look at the state of British two mile hurdling, don't you? There's only one horse to beat, and that's Honeysuckle. Uh, and something others got to go. I mean, you know, okay, might have had, had a minor setback, but it absolutely makes sense to stay over <coughs> and go for these big prices because what we've got in Britain at the moment is terrible. We've got five horses in this rate. Epitant, don't get me wrong, she's a former, she's a former champion hurdle winner, but she has not shown that she's as good as she was. And I think at Newcastle last time it showed that she definitely isn't as good as she was because that was how race was handed to her at the plate, and not so sleepy came back and uh, uh, and joined her on the line. Now. For me, looking at the prices, she's odds on, not so sleepy, he's about, uh, about three to one. Uh, it doesn't make any sense because he Agreed. booted the second last out of the ground at yeah. Newcastle. He also, he also hit the last. Uh, and you know that was basically giving the race to Epiton, but Still uh, he's come back, and got, uh, yeah. come back and got up. There's, like I said, there's up to 20 mil of rain forecast. That'll suit. 
Uh, and Goshen hasn't been declared, so he's going to get the, he's going to get his easy uh, lead at the front as yeah, well, which he didn't, of course, at the fighting fifth. Yeah, I mean it's 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 all there, and the rest just have you know soaring glory. We've seen doesn't mm. want a small field. We've got to forget his last cover. one though. I haven't think we? he just yeah, but I think yeah. he needs cover. I think he's one of those horses right. that wants them to go hard and, and get a bit of cover, and he isn't going to get that in small field conditions. Tritonic. Death Hall's just not good enough, is it? I mean, you know, it's a great big Adonis difference. Adonis winner, though, isn't he? You know, he was very yeah, good in Adonis. Yeah, he was very good in Adonis, but it was a very bad Adonis. Looks like he's a right-handed tracker now. Yes, he could be. He's it? a flat track. He's a flat yeah. track horse, I think. Right, you know what I mean? And he's got a bit of speed about him, but let's, you know, what he did at Ascot is a way, way off. Even these, you know, poor excuses for champion hurdle horses yeah. that we've got in Britain, he's still got a long way to go for that. Like, you know, so for me, it's a match. And, you know, again, it, you know, at those prices, there isn't a toss-up. You just back, not so sleepy. It's just the wrong price. There you go. Let's bring Patrick in then. Uh, nothing to be afraid about from over the Irish Sea, I don't think, here, Patrick. Or are we wrong? Well, look, Epitant is the one that, you know, she is champion her winner. She's obviously had that back operation. Sometimes it, they take a run or two to realise they feel better or move better. She's going to have to improve significantly um, from her first run. Uh, if I was a jockey... You'd pick her, but as Paul says, the prices make no sense. I, I, I don't understand why not to see these three times the price she is. And you know, imagine Johnny Burke will be making it a good gallop, go a strong gallop, and um, and try to get her off the bridle. Um, he probably actually would prefer if he did have a bit of company to, to keep him keep him honest all the way. But uh, the prices don't make any sense, no. Let's try and get it a bit more exciting. Then at least we've got the you know the renewed match. You know, one one, isn't it? If you like. So it's good to see these horses tackling each other again, Pat. Is she going to drift in that case, Mr Cooney? Yeah, I would say um, when you think there's 11 meetings uh, on the 26th, um, I, I, I find it hard to believe anyone could say Epitanti is the best value bet out of all the 11 meetings that day. I think we'll all be looking to oppose her. I mean, she got beaten this race at 5-1 to one on last year. Um I give her a due winning on her reappearance. Uh, not so sleepy, had had a recent flat run to his name. But nevertheless, you weren't thinking, OK, honeysuckle, honeysuckle, bring her on. We're ready for her. I, I just think she was just unimpressive, really. She's got a bit to do to prove to me. And you'd have to say she's a lay, wouldn't you? Now, I think not so sleepy has got his chance. Even more so were it to rain for him as well. He's definitely better on softer ground. I, I, I struggle to tip when I say not so sleepy would be my selection but I do think Epiton, I think we'll all be looking to take this one on. Yeah, agreed. I'm a not so sleepy as well. I think he's going to wake us all up then in what looks like a rather sleepy British challenge for the champion hurdle. 305, the King George, the Boxing Day showpiece, won by absolute legends over the years. Pat Cooney, nine declared, I'm delighted to say. Yeah, struggling to find a favourite at the moment with three to one each, um, Clanders Oboe and Manila. Um, and then it's five to one Frodon and Chantry House and six to one Asterio for Lange. And it's interesting, Clanders over. I think we'd all pencil him in for being a short price favourite from uh, as soon as the season really got, got busy. But he, he has been easy to back in the market. And I suppose he was beaten last year. He's got that stat where he's not necessarily wins when he's fresh. But I, on balance, I think he's the most likely win. I think Manella Endo, uh, as you touched on, he's got cheek pieces on for the first time, which is interesting. But... Uh, is he as effective going right-handed on a flat track at Kempton as he is at Cheltenham? The jury's out on that one. So, so maybe you could get the front two beat. If you, if if Patrick could promise me Asteria and Falange could stay on his feet, then I'd be looking at him. But I suppose on balance, I think Chantry House might be the sh the safer option. Mm, all right, we'll get to Patrick in a minute. Delighted <laughs> to see three Irish Raiders coming over. Most of us are. <laughs> well, most I'll of take you are, back yeah. to the start of the season. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all been waiting for this one, haven't we? Now, listen, this is how it goes. But you thought Clan would be a short well, price. Fact, I thought Clan would be a very short price because I just, I, you know, it was one of those, I believe it when I see it as far as the Irish coming over because so few have come over yeah. in the years. You, you know, going back, yeah. okay, vote or did. Like, you know, but, you know, the ones at the head of the market were like, yeah, yeah, Alaho and Apu and they're not there. Uh, and I really thought Manila Indo was a million to come to Kempton because I couldn't see that being his track Strange. at all. And Portico. Now, here he is. Here's a Gold Cup winner. He's second favourite. He probably deserves to be second favourite. You could argue he's got the best form because he won a Gold Cup, but he is one from six on a right-handed track. Mm. That Gold Cup form is the big outlier in his form. It's the only time he's run above an RPR of 170. Clanders Oboe's done that seven times, uh, including twice when winning a King George. 
so you've got to wait and see. And obviously he got left, for, you know, he got outpaced by, you know, Frodon and, and Galvin ran past him. Uh, damn well, now he's entitled to come on for that. And I think Frodon was definitely, definitely hard fit that day. Mm. Uh, Off for his life was the comment yeah, exactly. in August that he was going yeah, to get Frodon. Exactly, yeah, he was, he was, you know, he was hard fit that day. He won't be any better and I don't think he'll get an easy lead. Um, but I think Clanders, uh, I still think Clanders Oboe should be a short price favourite because it's his track. Yeah, uh, I expect him to win. I think the danger is Asterian for Lange, who's got to be one of the most frustrating horses in training because he's <laughs> actually a superb jumper. Yeah, and I think it's just a case of he has these lapses in concentration. Maybe if he gets a bit, a little bit under pressure, he starts going out to his right. I don't know why, but he was clearly going to beat Alaho the other day. I well, think that, I think it was very, you know, yeah. I mean, it looked like he was going to run all over him. And then what price is he? But it's a case of, you know, does he stand up? They've I mean, got that, to get that, there, haven't they? That handicap win at Punchestown last spring was, was amazing, of yeah. top weight. I mean, and he jumped them silly that day. It's just one of those horses near steering. The moment you go off, off him, you see him in a handicap. Yeah, you go, okay, yeah, yeah, you have to see, you have to see him. I don't think, I, 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 personally, I don't think Chantry House is going to be anywhere near good enough. So this is where we find out whether Chantry is Gold Cup material or Ryanair material, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Or indeed good enough. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I think I think he's still got to prove that. I mean, beating the big breakaway by 20-odd lengths, whatever it was at Sandown in a two-runner race, you know what I mean? You're running against one incredibly clumsy other rival. I mean, to me, that's nowhere near enough of test going into it. I can, you know, I can't see why people would fancy him to be mm. Gold Cup winners and King George winners on the strength of that. I think he's way, way too short. Place yeah. lay for me. Uh, that's the way I'll be approaching it anyway. Place lay, Shantry House of Kills getting on the other side of it. Right, waiting patiently in the wings. Two runners coming over from the close Sutton Basin. Asterion Falange, the John Durkin this Christmas looks like it won't be one of the key races going into it, Patrick. We'll talk about some of the other runners, like Mellon, your favourite, of course, who ran on eye catching for third there. Where would Asterion have finished? Was he a bridal job waiting to win? My gut at the time when, when he went down was he, that he had me beaten. Um, but then the more I thought about it, I thought if I stopped the race at the third last when I rode him in the Powers Gold Cup, I just thought I'd win. I'd have won. If I stopped the third the race at the third last in Cheltenham, I think he'd, he'd be nearly favoured to win. Or if I stopped it when I rode him in Leopard Sound, I think he'd be nearly favoured to win. So he's had three chances at grade ones there and he didn't see it out. And um, so he has to improve and improve significantly in my book. Um, now, the day in Fairhouse, which was two and a half miles, right-handed, everything went right, jumped brilliant. That was the day I was most disappointed with him. I got on him late. Paul got injured that day. Now, we'd left a tongue strap off him, so maybe that was it. But his one good chase run was in a handicap against very, very inferior horses. Um, so, I have a big question mark over the horse. I've always been a massive fan of him, but he let me down a couple of times last year in Cheltenham, in Leopardstown, in Fairhouse. So that's my question mark with him. I always thought he had this kind of ability, but I'm struggling. There's always an excuse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was, uh, everyone <laughs> will echo that. What about Tornado Flyer then, of course, also ran in the John Durkin? Yeah, Tornado Flyer, look, he was a grade one bumper winner. He's always banged air, he's turned the right air. He looks like he's probably a little bit short of grade one class at this level. Um, could he run into a place, third or fourth? Definitely. Um, he should, he's the type of horse that will improve from his first run. Um, and he should give Danny a good spin, but it's hard to see him troubling the horses at the top of the market. Um, I listened to Paul there. I actually thought Shantry House was probably the one to beat, mm. but he has potential. Um, you know, he beat us there in Verlange, kind of fair and square, and jelt them over two and a half. He buy Yates, they usually want to trip. Um, but, and his age, I suppose, gives him, it seems to be once you go over eight years of age in the King George, it's a lot more difficult to win, and Candace Ogo and Frodon, are kind of nine. Manila Indo, he, he doesn't come alive till March and spring in Cheltenham. Um, it just, it, I think Shantry House could be the one to beat. Ah, the head to head then. Pat Cooney, isn't it interesting to see, of course, Manila Indo wearing cheek pieces, Pat? A gold cup winner. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's, it's fascinating to see him here. I think most of us, as Key was alluded to earlier, we just weren't expecting a horse of his stature to come over for this race, but he's here. And you have to take the connections very seriously. But um, I say you, you've got that is he better left handed, right handed conundrum to worry about. So I, I do look at the front two in the market and well, indeed the front four or five. And you can find flaws in them. It's just a fascinating race. But I'm a little bit like Patrick. I think Chantry House has got more of an upside to him. And uh, as you touched on, the stable do seem uh, quite bullish about him. So it's an interesting race. I just hope uh, we, we, we get a real live Chelton Gold Cup contender come out of it.
Yeah, live indeed, and the market is waiting to come alive. I'm with me old mucker here. If you'd have told me in October I'd be getting three to one about Klander Zobo, he's the safe yeah. bet in the race. That is the King George. Who wins? Get your comments in below. If you'd like to sign up to the Racing Post Members Club this festive period, now's a great time to do so because we will give you your first three months when signing up half price, 50% off. That's right. Unrivaled, unlimited online access and access to the digital newspaper that goes out every night at 9 p.m. If you want to get involved, www.racingpost.com forward slash Merry Xmas. Well, it's Christmas here on What A Shout, so why not go double bauble bubble and give you an extra special guest? That's right, we're going to look towards the Welsh Grand National, and I'm delighted to say burgeoning trainer, we can call him that, from his Welsh base, Sam Thomas, comes along to join the party. Good afternoon, guys. How are we doing? Look at that picture in the background, Sam. Uh, I thought I'd better get it in the background, you know. <laughs> Find a place in my uh, kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Sam, it's fair to say you know this media game. We almost at one thought, th thought you might be doing the job that I'm, Dave Orton, am doing now. But, of course, you were lucky enough to pick up the job uh, when Christian Williams, of course, moved. You became primary trainer for Di Walters, the Welsh Supremo, of course. Before we go into that, let's have a little reminiscence of your riding career. It's fair to say, Sam, you rode the greats. I did. I was in the right place at the right time as a jockey, and um, you know, there's so many good jockeys around. You know, you just literally need to be in the in, in the place at the right time to get that opportunity to ride those good horses. And thankfully, I was um, able to get the leg up on some some, some incredible horses. Really, you were, um, yeah. You know, at, the, at, at the time, you take it for granted, but it's only now you look back and you think, yeah, you know, how lucky I was, really. Yeah, the association with Denman obviously was just insane, wasn't it? Of course, and uh, Corto Star. I guess the question is, Kills, you'll probably want to ask him who was best. <laughs> well, it's one that I, splits I think everyone. Be biased. It? I mean, Demon was very, very much the best in that Gold Cup, wasn't he? Uh, you know, yeah, we, we we all know that Koto Star had the best form and the highest rating. But the two, the, the, the two Hennessys and and the Gold Cup, he was sensational. Uh, you know, in in those in yeah. particular. Uh, uh, of course, so come on then, Sam. Off the fence, who was the best? Well, Demon in my eyes, like I was. Lucky enough to ride him more than on one occasion, really. So uh, I got more of a feel for him. Quarto, I only rode first time out for the season. Whether Paul would say it or not, you know, I didn't feel that he, he may be at his best first time out, although he did go and win a bet fair for me anyway. So uh, Denman was very uncomplicated, and that's what I like. Sam, you've got a great sense of humour. I imagine that Ruby Wall sends you a Christmas card every year because you were pretty much responsible for big bucks going back over hurdles, weren't you? <laughs> no, I wish I was. Unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, I didn't get any, any commission off it either, but uh, no, look at these things happen and um, it's all bridge under the water now. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Quite right. Moving on. Absolutely. We'll have to have a giggle. But seriously, Sam, last year, and of course your stable tour was in... The paper, of course, on the 23rd, no racing day, so it was a lovely feature for us to have. And I have to say, I've picked out some nuggets, Sam. So last season, COVID season, of course, as we call it, 26 uh, winners from 92 runners. You are becoming something of a known target trainer. You get the best out of each horse you've got. Have you got 30 in at the moment? Yeah, we would have 30. Um, probably 10 of those are horses that may not run this season. They're sort of younger horses coming through. Uh, but I'm in the lucky position where there's no pressure put on me. Um, and... Like I say, if they're forward enough and they're showing us enough, they'll run. If not, they're horses for next season. So, yeah, we'll have about 20, just over 20 horses to run this season, really. Yeah, you've got some exciting runners over the Christmas period. A couple of horses that aren't entered that I know our viewers would love to know about. Should we start with Good Risk at All? Who, of course, found yeah. one too good so far over hurdles. But you probably might just have bumped into one at Newbury last time. And his bump perform, it stands up, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. His bump perform is rock solid. Um, but he's still a big baby, obviously, he showed us that first time out, and to be honest, uh, it, we thought he'd go and win, but um, we weren't too disappointed when he came back after that, really, because, you know, we know what he could be like first time out, we were actually gutted when he when he ran last season uh, in, in his bumper, we thought he was a certainty, so he just is one of those horses he's going to need a bit more experience, needs time, um, and like, we went to take on John Bon, and yeah, we, we were sort of confident he'd run his race, and uh, if he went and beat him, then great, we would have been back on track and, and sky was the limit. And um, we got put in our place and, and, and come back with a nice rating of 125. So um, just trying to find the right race for him now before we kick, kick off again, really. Yeah, of course, because he needs three runs over the hurdles, doesn't he, to qualify for the big one. So not too far when he comes out on that third run, Sam, 125. <laughs> uh, Skytastic as well is another horse I want to ask you about. Two from two in bumpers last year. That debut form where he beat Orby's legend and Mr. Glass, he's four from four since. You must be looking forward to him. <clears throat> yeah, very much so. We had him ready to run at the start of the season, to be honest, but the ground was too quick at Chepstow. We didn't run him. 
and he had a tiny niggle, so he's just put us on the back foot. Um, but he's back uh, working away now, and um, yeah, he'll be out in the new year. But yeah, like he's he's 17 hands plus. Um, he's every inch a chaser. Uh, jumps amazingly well. He's just like an old hand already. <laughs> you know, if you're ever going to compare a horse to uh, the likes of Denman physically, it's Den. It, it's fantastic. You know, he's he's got every everything you want in a racehorse, and um, yeah, fingers crossed he could be very exciting. I don't think we'll see loads of him this season. I think next season will be you know will be a season where he could probably go chasing and. Fingers crossed, go go right to the top. Mm, it sounds like one of his old mentors there, doesn't he? <laughs> Whatever he does is a bonus and all that sort of thing. You heard it first, if anyone's going to know. This is why you tune in, viewers, to watch a show. But it is Christmas, Sam. You've got runners. We're going to talk about, of course, I will do it before midnight. Of course, we've got previews coming up with that. But you do have runners elsewhere. Which is the most likely winner? Well, good question. It's nice to see our dancer get back on track. Uh, he doesn't run till Monday. Um, but... Um, yeah, we kind of felt that he's just not got the love for jumping fences at the minute. Um, so it's great to see him put in a good performance at Sandown and the Potemps. Yeah, okay, it wasn't maybe the strongest race, but it's the first time he's actually galloped right to the line in, in three previous runs. So we took a lot of uh, you know a lot of positives out of that. He's come back in great form. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go and win or run very well at uh, Chepstow in the three miler. He's got a top claimer on Thomas Doggrel. Yeah, uh, he seems to be. Um, you know, on a lot of people's notebooks. And um, yeah, I, I, like I say, I'm, I'm delighted for the horse, really, because he's got a lot of ability and I think it's more of a mental thing with him. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go and run well. Um, got a couple of nice bumper horses out, one at Huntingdon, one at uh, Wincanton, both lovely horses that go go very well at home. So fingers crossed they can go and um, go and run well. Um, and um, yeah, obviously before midnight on Monday. So Lots going on. Lots going on. There you go. Not just cranberry sauce here. We just poured on some bread sauce for you as well. <laughs> well, another festive treat for you here on What A Shout. Let's go to the Monday of the day after, of course, Boxing Day 27th. And we've got the Desert Orchid Chase. 2.30 it is. Will he? Won't he? Pat Cooney. Turn up, that is. Shishkin. Well, let's hope he does. And if he does turn up, of course, he's going to get £3 in weight from Greenatine. And... Um, that could be invaluable to him. Where he is and what plans Nicky Henderson has for him, I don't know. We don't even know what the ground's going to be. There is heavy rain forecast. Um, so from our point of view, we're waiting for the final decks and see what happens. Um, can Green the team give him weight and a beating? I don't think so. So I, I hope Shishkin runs. I think he'll win. Um, but he hasn't run for 260-odd days. He's had his problems. Is he a bet or a lay at odds on? Well, you'd have to probably say he's a lay. But it'll be good to see him back. But... Um, Again, another race we're on weather watch and uh, be interesting. Mm. So you must be a bit torn here, Kills, because, of course, you're getting all the high fives at Sandown about green at teen, knocked it out of the park, but one horse has been very kind to you in this race, hasn't he? And it's rather <laughs> topical as well, because you've been putting up five-star naps on before midnight. Well, there's three, there's three horses that have been very good to me in the race, haven't they? Sky Pirate, Grenatine, and, of course, and, the before, pirate. and before midnight. So metaphorically, if they all run... Uh, I, you know, I, I love them all, in fact, because um, Shishkin was my bet of the day for the Supreme Novices Hurdle, if you want to go that far back. <laughs> so, you know, there's nothing can go wrong. Uh, word of warning to punters, of course, is that Nicky Henderson managed to get beaten after setbacks in this race, both Altior and Splinter Sacra. Mm. So there, there is previous. Um, so <laughs> uh, wait and see. I think Paul Nichols, I think several of them are waiting and wondering what, what is going to happen. Granatine's in there in case Shiskin doesn't run it. It'll be yeah. interesting to see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who presses the button once it, once it's a yay or nay for Shishkin, and it, you know it'll be one of those races. It probably has one entry with, in, at nine fifty seven, <laughs> doesn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, and you'll have to wait and see. Actually, you worry about with a horse like Before Midnight is if you end up, you know, let's say Before Midnight ends up making the running, uh, and he gets his own way in, in front. Uh, he should do, should he? Yeah, he probably should do. Then he may not get beat as far as the form book says he should, and it'll ruin his handicap mark. Well, all right. That, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but then you might be able to say then, well, after as well, maybe he is a graded horse as well. But it's, it, it, it's a difficult one because when she, when, you know, because you're not in novice company, yeah. they can do whatever they want to your handicap mark. Uh, and, and that's something you've got to consider. You know? Yeah. And it's, well, it, you know, it, it's a worry. Well, before we go to Sam and, and get the word on Before Midnight, uh, the hat-trick seeker, um, let's... Um, Let's talk about the champion chase anti-post market because say Shishkin flops out here, that five to two about an Ergamin might be a thing of the past, won't it? Well, yeah, you'd thought so. He'd definitely come in, definitely come in the fab, wouldn't it? Without running, well, yeah, you know, so. but you'd love to see, you'd love to see him. I mean, you're still not convinced they're ever going to race against each other until they do, are we? You know what I mean? And, you know, you, 
I, you know, I'd love it to happen, but you know, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world if Ellen Jermaine ended up being the Ryanair, would it? Yeah. You know, so we've got to we've got to wait and see with that. Like, you know, I mean, I'd like to see them all get back on track, and so we can have a look forward to a real match up at Cheltenham. But you know, they've got to get over their first targets first. The vibes are starting to get stronger about Shishkin. I think we're erring on the side that we might see him then, Sam. So, for people that don't understand how it works, you will be nine fifty-five on Boxing Day, scouring the entries as they come in, and you'll be hoping for a walkover. That's one man that will. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Look, yeah, you, you summed it up there, really. We're off a mark of 148, so we're up against it uh, on, on the bare form. Um, but, yeah, you know, my heart wants to sort of uh, try and keep those ones by his name and try and find some easier opportunities. Um, sorry, my head, sorry, but my, you know, but my heart says, you know, let's have a go. And, and obviously, if Shishkin comes out, it makes it a little bit more appealing as well. But, um yeah, look, I mean, from all the articles you read, uh, it reads to me like Nicky's sort of got the Clarence House more, more as a target, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if we don't see him line up. Uh, and then, you, you know, we've got Grenadine to beat, obviously. Um, but, um, look, we couldn't be in better form. You might think I'm all absolutely crazy for thinking about running him in there. I, I don't know. Um, like you say, two miles on good ground. He jumps like he jumps. He, he could just run a massive race, but um, we're under no illusions. I'm not expecting him to go and win there, but I don't expect him to run a, run a big race, really. Well, the man next to me thought you were a certainty for the Grand Annual. 148 would be, you know, absolutely fine. <laughs> That's um, it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know whether we're doing the right thing or not, really, but um, yeah. I'm not sure. It's we'll a whole see. season, though, isn't it? So, well, exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, that's ah, the problem. Right. This is where I'm going with this. Well, yeah, because trainer I'm, runs horses. Yeah, trainer runs horses, and they still win. Sky Pirate carried on running, didn't he? And yeah. I, I thought he couldn't win after the that. Warwick run. I thought wasn't he it? couldn't yeah. win after that. But no, I mean, yeah. if performing night jumps as well as he as he has jumped, he's a force to be reckoned with yeah. wherever he goes. Yeah. Um, he does have to make a big, big jump uh, to be running up against champion chase. Um, Contenders, but front runners but, around Kempton, two miles. But yeah, well, my only hope is that you know if he gets beat, then jockey eases him up, <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't get thumped. Listen, but, trainer know, wants that's... prize money. He's, he's not all about kills, yeah. you know. This. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm talking about my own personal <laughs> <laughs> agendas on the race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's going to be a cracker before midnight. Will he strike? Real treat for us then, of course. The 250, the Welsh Grand National, the Slog Fest. That is, of course, known absolute war of attrition. Really classy field. Sam, I suppose we have to come to you. Of course, the political decision to move it behind closed doors must have been a real hit. Of course, all the staff at Chepstow, the bookies, of course, the punters, the race goes, uh, uh, you know, connections. We all feel for it. Yeah, it's just heartbreaking for, for, for everyone, really, especially people that have been looking forward to going and racing, the race course that have invested all the money in uh, getting the track ready for, for all the punters. So... Yeah, it's desperately sad. It doesn't really make sense, especially when you know when you can go across the bridge there to Kempton and and, and quite happily go racing. So a big shame. Um, and I was just told I think I think four owners per horse can go. So um, mm. it's uh, it's a bit of a help, but still it's not going to um, you know bring it back to how, how how it would have been. There was a lot of people looking forward to it. So yeah, yeah great shame. But thankfully the show goes on and um, we'll still be there doing our best. Yeah, OK. Well said, Sam. Absolutely. I think I, I agree with everything about that. Uh, Pat Cooney, let's come to you then. Native River, previous winner of the race. Very classy horse, of course. Gold Cup winner. Keeps a few <clears throat> worrying about their mark, doesn't it, of course. Where does he sit in the market? Well, he's currently around about a 12 to 1 chance. And uh, the favourite for the race, as he's been ever since the, uh, the, the entries were known, of course, is Secret Reprieve. Now, he won easily last year. I was surprised, you know, and I was just checking out the other day. He only went up six pounds for winning that race a year ago. From my recollection, he was always the likely winner from start to finish in that race. So I could definitely say Secret Reprieve is a very well handicapped horse at 140. Of course, he hasn't run since then. So therein lies the problem. We have laid the big dog, the Irish Raider of uh, Peter Fahey. That's been a very popular order. But I was interested in uh, asking Sam really about I Will Do It. Is having Native River in the race a blessing or a curse? Because um, if he wasn't in the race, the weights would have gone up considerably. And you might have that well handicapped look about you. But as things stand, you're right there amongst the rest of them on the, the 10 stone mark. But would you mm. rather not have had Data River and the weights go up? Yeah, it's a tough one, really. Um, you know, as a jockey, there's nothing better to, well, apart from having to sweat and do the weight. But there's nothing better than having a, a nice 10 stone lightweight in a big handicap, especially in a race like this where they go such a good gallop. But yeah, I agree. There's, there's a lot of us on the same mark there. We're you know, slightly wrong at the weights, obviously. And uh, we, te you know, we attempted to claim off him just to try and counteract that. But um, I thought Native River had a really tough race the last day. He finished very tired. Um, I know he's had a bit of time to recover, but uh, that would be a bit of a worry. You know, the, the, the sort of <laughs> those races do leave their marks on, on, on those horses. But 
yeah, again, he's going to make sure it's a good a good test, isn't he? Um, but um, yeah, we're, we're just we're just happy at this stage. It looks like we're going to get in, to be honest, because at one stage it wasn't looking likely. Yeah, of course, you needed 19 to come out at one point. Just one ahead of you now. Um, so you are basically secret reprieve mark two, Sam, aren't you? Of course, you won the trial. You absolutely hosed up in that. You get the four pound penalty. That puts you pretty much on on what your future mark will be. He's a handy horse, though, Sam, isn't he? So he likes to be up there, right? Yeah, I think. Um... I completely cocked up last season. Uh, I sort of stuck him in the deep end uh, in, the, in the borders national up at Kelso. And in all honesty, I thought he would do what he did at Chepstow up at Kelso, but it never worked out. Um, he, he missed the first, and he was on the back foot from the word go. And he came back from Kelso looking like a like, looking like a greyhound. It took me forever to get him back um, to sort of to sort of get him back to life, really. And um, we felt we'd just leave him over hurdles then just to sort of let him get his confidence back and things like that. So it was no real surprise to see him do that at Chepstow then. And, um, yeah, he's quite uncomplicated. Loves loves being sort of handy and getting on with things. He's got a sort of a nice cruising speed. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, he'll be able to stay, stay that trip all day long with a bit of luck. Oh, I like to hear that. I will do it. I think he can do it. <laughs> Ticks every box for me. And um... All that thought, I think, of Venetia's is... is one of his main dangers, I, I think. I think that horse is progressive, and yeah, her horses are flying. Hang on a minute, Sam. I, 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 I was considering <laughs> napping this. You're, you're putting up <laughs> dangers now. <don't> you? <laughs> you're putting up dangers. Isn't it great to have a guest though that comes on viewers and puts up a danger? Yeah. Somewhere like to do it. Yeah, Kills, put up some more dangers. Oh yeah, Kills. Let's come to you because you actually. What did you say to me? You're all over one here. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, don't get me wrong. I think I will do it. Has got an excellent chance. He's he is essentially off his correct mark, even being out of the handicap because he's gone that high. And of all those at the head of the market, I'd favour him, but. I keep coming back to Elegant Escape. Now, of the, of the Tizards, I don't see Native River being able to win it off, as an 11-year-old off 166, but I do see Elegant Escape being able to win it as a 9-year-old off 156. Uh, and obviously with a lot of horses, you know, with a certain amount of horses out of the handicap too, that helps. Uh, and I just thought he was a really, really eye-catching run. He ran over two miles over hurdles mm. uh, on his first run for ages. And no surprise whatsoever that he was going to get outpaced when the pace picked up down the back straight at Sandown. But he actually ran on really strongly late on past a few in the straight. Uh, and in terms of what he did there over hurdles, it was almost his best ever hurdle run. Uh, and it was his first ever run at two miles. Oh, no, he's not a two miler. He's a stayer. He went yeah. off nine to four favour for this two years ago off a four pound higher mark, remember. And he's a 20 to one shot. I think, he's, he, I think they're desperate to get a run into him somewhere. Uh, and two mile over hurdles, they got a really good blow out of him. But I like the way he finished the race off, and yeah, he just interests me from a from a horse that, is, that you know has been placed off higher marks in a, in a, in a Hennessy Labrooks Trophy or, or whatever, uh, and now uh, is on a reasonable mark at a decent price, uh, and he's still only nine. So yeah, he, he, he interests me a lot. Mm, maybe not the second string as some might think them from Team Tizard. Well. I'm still confident, Sam. I think you can do it. Uh, all the best, Sam. Honestly, it, it's been great to have you on. We hope you come back on in the future, maybe when Sky Tastic's about to go and win a big prize for you over fences or okay, something like I, that. I will do it up here next time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant to have Sam Thomas. Sam, from all of us here on What A Shout, very Merry Christmas to you and your team. Thank you very much, guys. All the best. Right then, let's get the Christmas naps out. Who's going to be getting an extra mince pie? <coughs> Paul Keeley? Clan in the King George. I think three to one's a cracking pie. Can we get a next best? Because I think you've... It, it, what, what else are you looking forward to? There must got to be something else, man. Everyone knows you're all over the uh, I like Silver Hallmark in the uh, Roland Merrick at Weatherby. That's two Massive ten. chance. Yeah, big yeah. chance. Big, big run against Fiddler on the roof of Carlisle, given that he was so badly off at the weights and now he's off his correct mark yeah. in a handicap. We'll stay. We'll yeah, like don't game. miss that. The Roland Merrick is a real treat at Weatherby. Pat Cooney, give us an app. Yeah, Weatherby 245, number two unexpected party for the skeleton team. Um, this fellow won over the course and distance early on in the season. Looks like the handicapper was there that day as well and uh, didn't go unnoticed. But I thought he was a little bit unlucky at Cheltenham last time out. I thought maybe he should have won that race. And this is slightly calmer waters. So unexpected party, 245, Weatherby. We all look out, of course, for these wrong prices when all these markets come out. I've definitely spotted one in the 135 at Limerick on St. Stephen's Day. It's, uh, 
There's a condition settled. It's Daily Tiger, who, according to the market, is the second string of the Giggins Towns. But he ran on when everything that tried to take on Enigamine last time, of course, in any way, had had enough. He's crying out for this trip. He's unexposed over hurdles. This is a knockout bet. Patrick Mullins, complete the four-timer. Um, well, so look, I, I can't give Fasai Vega again, so we'll go with something with a bit of a little bit of value. Um, I think Lord Royal in the Paddy Power chase has the potential to be better than his mark, particularly with Jack Foley claiming five. Uh, he's a second season novice. He ran in the tri tang where he made a bad mistake early on, novice mistake that knocked him out of it. Um, he's the type that, like I said, I think he could be better than his mark, particularly with Jack's claim. So he's worth rolling the dice on. Oh, Lord Royal with Ooh. the back class then to finally come good day with a nap. Patrick has even moved to the kitchen <laughs> to get the champagne out. <laughs> well, we've come to the end of the festive. What a shout. Oh, my goodness gracious me. So much racing to look forward to. Paul Keeley, thank you ever so much for coming back in, my man. Have a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, same to you. Same to all the viewers as well. We're really, really looking forward to it. Some cracking racing. Uh, day in, day out until the end of the year, basically. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be back in for the New Year's Eve version, not the last one of 2021. Uh, yes, I will indeed, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, yeah, we will be back on New Year's Eve as well, Pat Cooney. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it and looking forward to a great Christmas and all the stars are on show, hopefully. Let's hope they all win. Thanks, Pat. Enjoyed a big day. <laughs> Patrick, great to have you on. Thanks for the insight. It's always an absolute peach to get inside your mind, man. And uh, all the best. Let's hope you come home safe and sound. That's the main thing from us all here at What A Shout. Merry Christmas to Team Close Sutton. Thanks so much, lads. Uh, <laughs> open the presents now. <laughs> I suppose you have to get them out early, don't you? Absolutely. Exactly. It's a big exactly. day. Listen, great to have you watching us as well. Don't forget to download the free Must Have Racing Post app, an absolute must over the Christmas period. You do that on the App Store, the Google Play Store. 11 meetings on Boxing Day. Do gamble responsibly. So, for myself, Dave Orton, and everyone here at What a Shout, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>